Surrounded by five empty podiums, Eluid Mutiora Carriara, a former banker turned running mate to independent presidential candidate Jafet Kavinga Kaluyu, was undeterred by his opponent's absence and agreed to answer all the questions asked of him by two moderators and the audience. We are counting on the Kenyan people to help us fight corruption. How we can achieve that today is this way. On August the 8th, we have an opportunity for our voice to be heard through the ballot. If you help us by electing into office MCAs, women representatives, MPs, senators, and governors who are beyond reproach, then you are helping us to start the war against corruption. Why the other candidates were not present is unclear. Although some had already voiced objections to the debate format, broadcasters had planned to have six minor candidates, including Carriara, take the stage first, with the front runners from the two biggest parties facing off separately later. For the audience expecting the back and forth of ideas, there was a flood of disappointment, with some feeling insulted. I'm a very disappointed person. I, I, we were waiting. I mean, the, the Kenyan community was waiting for, uh, you know, the running mates to come and present their thoughts and uh, yet their manifesto and why they are actually supporting their, their mates. But uh, I was very disappointed that uh, only one person uh, turned up. Kenya's current deputy president, William Ruto, said on Twitter that he had not been given details of the event, but Debate Media Limited, the alliance of broadcasters that organized the debate, said in the statement that all the campaign buddies had been informed. To me, like it was really a competition, if you will, or a tug of war between the media and the politicians. And it was very interesting in that sense because it is really about who runs the agenda for the country, if you think about it. It's very much, um, uh, I think it came to, uh, we're at a point where these two groups are all trying, both of them are trying to say this is how things should go, you know, uh, and, and to, to demonstrate that they are, uh, they are powerful. Kenya will also choose legislators and local representatives in the August 8 polls, which will see incumbent president Uhuru Kenyatta challenged by veteran opposition leader Rayla Odinga, the head of the National Super Alliance, NASA. A presidential debate is scheduled for Monday, July the 24th, but both Odinga and Kenyatta have said they will not take part, while none of the six independent presidential candidates is polling above 1%. Well, staying in Kenya, public university lecturers have called off their strike over the implementation of a pay rise agreement. This comes after the government offered to pay more cash immediately. The lecturers, members of the University Academic Staff Union, ended a 54-day strike over pay in February and signed an agreement with the government in March for a 17.5% salary increase and a 3.9% more for housing allowances. Now, but they started another strike this month, disappointed about the pace of implementation. The association says the government has signed another undertaking to release 5.25 billion shillings this month to pay its members, leading to the decision to end the strike. Well, Kenyan journalist Teddy Otiena joins us live from Nairobi to tell us more about both issues. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Let's start with the election. Does Eluid Carriera stand a better chance at the polls after being the only vice presidential candidate at the televised debate? Uh, well, just to put it out there, at the same time, trying to be very, very non opinionated. Full uh, he's at a distant, almost negligible zero point. As for the poll, so it really beats logic to say that he's among the key contenders in this particular election because it actually stands like a distant uh, point as, uh, as we speak right now because uh, it's only the leading two candidates, the incumbent president, Kenyatta, and the opposition leader, Ronald Dinger, who are actually putting the tough race against each other. Well, there may likely be more empty podiums next week as President Uhuru Kenyatta and Mr. Rila Odinga himself have both said that they will not be attending the presidential debates. How do you expect this to play out? 
Well, uh, it's all been interesting to see whether the two leading candidates will uh, actually turn out uh, turn up for the particular presidential debate. Because one, the deputy is really failed to actually honor the summons. And then now, this comes barely a week uh, to the presidential debate. We have already seen a position from uh, the parties, of course, uh, led by the Secretary General, so already speaking of how uh, this might not likely be feasible. It might not likely be a good idea for the presidential uh, candidates to appear on screen and debate the issues. So uh, we're actually putting it at uh, 72 party percent, with a 30 percent chance of the debate happening. Finally, we understand the university lecturers, you know, have called off their strike. How certain is it that the classrooms will not be abandoned again, say, in another two months, because, you know, the same issues will arise? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Indeed. Um, you know, the university lecturers under the organization, WASM, had threatened to actually go on strike earlier uh, this week. And, of course, uh, they did that towards the end of last week, whereby they've been... Uh, they've been going on strike all across the country. All the union branch and leaders have maintained this hardline stance. And of course, the government honored this play yesterday after it released the fans. And the fans are actually uh, got into the accounts of the teachers this afternoon. A few hours back, the teachers were able to receive the rest of the amount of the 5.6 billion shillings in Kenyan currency uh, that they required as part of the collective bargaining agreement that the same with the government. So as it stands right now, the teachers are happy a lot. They were smiling all the way to the bank, and of course, it will be interesting to see whether this will stand, or rather whether this will hold with us for a long time. Over to you. Right, Teddy, thank you so for your time on Network Africa. Let's go on now. In Southern Africa, Zimbabwe's cabinet has resolved to impose a minimum prison sentence of 60 years for the rape of a child below the age of 12 or a person with disabilities. Minister of Information Chris Mushowe also says that the rest of the cases of rape or sodomy would carry a minimum sentence of 40 years. He adds that tougher sentences are needed to protect the society against the perpetrators of such crimes. The cabinet's decision is subject to parliamentary approval of the legislation on the new sentences. Meanwhile, a 10-year-old girl has allegedly been killed by a lion while relieving herself at night at the back of a hut in a rural part of Zimbabwe. The police say Mitchell Mucheni's aunt allegedly watched in shock as the lion dragged the child into a bush. The child's body was later discovered about 300 meters away. The incident happened on Saturday night near a famous game reserve in southeastern Zimbabwe. Still to come on Network Africa. The UN's humanitarian chief Stephen O'Brien says violence in the Central African Republic has assumed terrible proportions. Please stay with us.